Right, oh moochers, it's day two of the lockdown. This video is going to go through all of the gear that I would take on a typical uh, top water land bay session. First things first, uh, the bag. So uh, it's the Just Another Fisherman dry bag. Uh, I've had this one now for two or three seasons. And um, yeah, it's just perfect for this style of fishing. Fishing with lures, uh, off the rocks, uh, you can't beat it. Um, it's waterproof too, uh, which has proved really useful for rock hopping. Uh, you roll it up, clips into place, and um, you know there's times when I might swim between uh, a gap in the rocks, and uh, this means I can pretty much just push my bag out in front of me, swim after it, climb onto another ledge, um, and I don't have to worry about any of the any of the gear getting wet. So um, yeah, that's a real bonus. A um, couple of bits on the bag, so. There's this front zip, which is really handy for keeping like your phone in here, your car keys, um, anything that you want to access really quickly. Um, so that's really handy. Um, on the side is this pouch and, and strap here, which is which is perfect for your moocha mat. Um, it fits in through this strap here into the pouch, and you can do it up nice and tight. So um, yeah, it's pretty much made for a moocha hunter because your mat's easily accessible on the side. On the other side of the bag, there are two straps as well for, um, well, sometimes if I'm going on a longer walk um, or if there's a bit of the rocks that I've got to climb using both hands, I'll break the rod into the two pieces and I'll put the rod uh, into these two straps. And um, yeah, it just means your hands are free. You can climb around and then, um, and then get it back out easy enough. Um, inside the bag, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you this, but is that going to pick it up? Nah, it's not. But anyway, inside the bag, there are on either side of the bag, there's two zip pockets uh, with a sort of pouch about yay big. And um, yeah, that's really handy for putting some things in that you don't want just sort of flying around in the bag. So um, again, sometimes I put my phone in there instead. Um, if you've got little bits of sort of filming equipment, bind them in there. Uh, yeah, so there's two of these either side, um, which is really handy. Uh, yeah, so that's the Just Another Fisherman uh, dry pack. And again, these things are, are awesome. Cannot fault them. Okay, so uh, let's look at what goes in the bag. Um, so if I'm packing the night before, uh, first thing that goes in is my drink bottle. Uh, this is the Good Bottle Co. The beauty of these two is that uh, you put a couple of ice cubes in here and it's gonna stay cold all day. Uh, likewise, if you wanna make a coffee, uh, it's gonna keep it hot all day as well. So this thing's been awesome. So that goes in the bottom of the bag first. The filming kit. So obviously, Moocha Hunters, we release all of our fish, so uh, a lot of emphasis on, on the video and the measuring and the release. So uh, a couple of cool bits of kit um, as far as the filming goes. First and foremost uh, is obviously the GoPro. I think I've got the Hero 5. Um, I know the newer versions, they've really improved the stabilization. So if you're you know, walking across rocks and things, uh, the image is way more stable than these, which are sort of all over the show. I always use the chesty strap. Uh, it gets a good sort of um, field of view. The other thing that I really like with these is because it's got this um, chest plate, you can take it off and you can use that as a base to film as well. Um, I quite like to chop and change between sort of on myself and just back on the ledge filming the action. So it's really easy just to take the, the strap off, chuck it on the rocks and it's easy enough to, to get it sort of level. Other bits of filming kit, uh, I've got this extendable pole. I wish I got the see-through version of the Go pole and I wish I got the floaty version. This one sinks like a rock and it's quite heavy. Uh, another cool gizmo is one of these egg timers. Um, these pick up a time lapse, so your GoPro fits on top, and um, you can set it to you can set it any time really. But uh, you wind it up, and over I think it's over an hour, it does a full 360 um, spin. And so if you set yours to time lapse on either video or still pics, uh, you get a really cool effect. It does the full 360 or you can do 180 or whatever so uh, another thing on the list that goes in the bag is my my dome these again take a really cool shot they take that 50 50 shot above and below um, they're quite tricky to use so 
Uh, it pays to watch some YouTube videos about how to get really good shots with these. Um, the main thing really is that you don't want any water droplets to get on the top half of the dome um, because it gets all streaky and the droplets get in your shot. And especially with the sunlight, um, it can really distort what, what you're filming. Um, so the trick with these is to lower the dome in and there are these marks on the back that show you where the halfway is. And so you're trying to get it down like that and you're keeping the top half dry um, as, as much as you can. But I mean, inevitably it's gonna get wet. So if you buy this stuff, Rain-X uh, from the warehouse, um, you use a, use a cloth, what are they called? It's like microfiber or something. And you wipe the stuff over the top of the stone. Um, it helps to stop the water droplets from settling on the on the actual um, dome itself. So yeah, that's Rain-X, it's pretty good stuff. Okay, the lures that I take, so kind of just honed it in and narrowed down to four or five lures that I take on a trip. Um, I usually go for lures that are more natural uh, in color. Um, so I go sort of more whites, grays, blues, greens, um, but I will chuck in probably one lure that's totally different. Um, I pretty much take these five lures. The OTL Piper, um, this is the 40 grams. It gives a really cool action on the surface. Uh, you can change up the hook arrangements too and it does different darty stuff in the water, but um, that's proved to be really good over the last couple of seasons. So yeah, OTL Piper is the OTL in the bleeding mullet color. Uh, this one's a little bit beat up, but still works a treat. So 100 grams, 100 gram chop. Uh, that's always in the bag, the grey mullet. A new lure going in my bag is uh, this big NACL lure. Um, Hamish made this for me a little while ago. Beautiful looking lure. Again, got the natural colours. Uh, and this is the 150 gram, so completely different profile in the water to some of the smaller lures. So um, that one is definitely going in there. The new crispy is going in the bag. Um, yeah. I've actually not really had a chance to fish this lure yet, which is doing my head in, um, but I reckon this one's gonna go off. So yeah, another OTL in the bag. And then, um, yeah, and then finally, I usually put in one lure that's completely different colored. So um, I've got one of these Rapidos in pink. Um, yeah, just to have a different color altogether. Uh, so I've got a couple of these, just another fisherman mesh bags. Uh, they've got two compartments to them. They've got uh, quite a thick, uh, rigid mesh to them, so your your hooks don't really get caught up in it. So these are perfect for uh, chucking your stick baits in. Uh, they're a good size. Um, the 150 gram is a bit of a struggle, sort of goes on an angle. Um, but yeah, your lures, 100 gram and below, perfect in these bags. Um, so I'll load up one of these with the stick baits. And then uh, the other bag, the other mesh bag, I'll put the um, the leader, the split rings, extra swivels. Uh, you gotta make sure that you've got a good pair of um, split ring pliers as well. Um, it's really frustrating if you've got a crappy pair, um, like those are my first pair there, and if they're not quite up to it, and the action's hot and you're trying to change lures, that can be really frustrating. Whereas a big booty pair that just gets the job done real quick um, are handy, so yeah, these have been good. These are mustard ones. Um, yeah, good to have a good pair of um, split ring pliers. Sweet, so the last couple of bits of kit, I take the UE Boom. Yeah, sometimes I like to play tunes on the rocks. Other times I just like the sounds of the ocean and stuff. So UE Boom goes in. A buff, I quite like wearing a buff. Um, keeps the sun off your face, keeps the sun off my schnoz. Uh, yeah, buff goes in. And then it's pretty much just your reel. So for me, it's the new Flash uh, Soltiga, and um, that's pretty much it. So you can go way more lean than that. So I mean, if I was in a rush, it would literally be lures, terminal gear, leader, um, something to film with, probably just the GoPro, and uh, the Mucha mat, and that would be it. Um, whereas if it's gonna be like a full day, then I'd probably pack all of the filming gear um, I'd probably pack maybe a couple more lures. Yeah, and that'd see me out for a whole day's uh, fishing off the rocks. So here is all that gear I've just gone through. Uh, so it sounded like heaps, but I mean, there it is there. So uh, bags are really useful just to keep everything together. Most of it's filming gear, really. Um, 
just the one reel, food and drink, and uh, all fits in here nicely. Uh, that pouch there's got enough room for the go pole, the mat, and sometimes um, I'd slip the knife in as well. Always handy to have a knife. So that's all that gear uh, that I just went through in the bag, real comfortable, so it's not, not a drama at all. I've just packed my bag to not go fishing for the next month. Yo!